All right, guys, so I'm going to go through a, a training video from start to finish on the My CNG Guy Clean Diesel system. And uh, this is going to be my test platform. And um, this is a 2004 7.3 liter Ford Power Stroke. It's a very, very popular truck. And uh, I'm very excited to finally receive one so that I can show people exactly how to install this kit. So since this is such a popular truck, um, we finally chose this truck to uh, install the components on. So this is our engine. And I'll go through the component list now. Um, so this customer chose to get our new fuel uh, nozzle system. I have a video of this describing what it is and how it works. Uh, this is available right now. We have almost a hundred of these, so uh, that's available. There's your high pressure steel tubing. Um, this is the coolant lines for the regulator. <clears throat> Let me open up this box here. So here's our 3600 PSI fill nozzle. Put that down there. This is going to be a mixer that you receive in our diesel kit. It's a professional nice aluminum mixer. And this is our stepper motor, the see-through window. This is the water tees. That'll go for the coolant hose there and the re reducer. This is the end cab switch. Now I've got to find some place to mount that. Now this has a little thing here that uh, you can mount. This is the switch wiring harness. This is the main computer wiring harness. Yeah, that'll go to the stepper motor there. And this is a little wiring connect connection clips that you get. And this is the computer you receive that uh, controls the stepper motor. Get a little fuse adapter. This is the oxygen sensor kit that you're going to receive in the kit. Uh, this will come with all of them. Uh, we give you a, provide you a weld-in bung to mount this into your exhaust. And there's the oxygen sensor. This is mandatory. This will go in all of them. If you receive this kit with this ECU, then you have to put this in. And here's our fuel gauge. So we mount it in the reducer. So everything you're going to get is brand new. And here is the reducer. So this is our vapor reducer. And I, I ship these out pre sent out. This will, turn, will be turned out two turns. This is your idle adjustment. And then this is your boost. And this right here does not work unless you have a proper mixer. No matter what kit you buy from whoever you buy it from, uh, this boost has to be activated under vacuum. And the only way to do that is with a real mixer. If you don't have any kind of mixer in there and you just have an elbow just going right into the air, uh, it won't create a vacuum and it will not activate this diaphragm. So this has to be correct. So I'll go back and show you the fuel tank right now. This is a really common question. What kind of fuel tank do you mount in there? That's it right there. That's a DOT brand spanking new uh, type 2 CNG tank. Uh, it's going to be mounted up there. Um, these are going to be the brackets. You can see the technician right now. He is assembling the bracket kit together and he will professionally mount that in. So that's the tank. The customer wanted the fuel door right here in this area right next to his original diesel door so we're going to mount that right here in this area so and then the fuel gauge we'll mount that most likely right here I'll mount that right there so it'll be nice and clean and easy to see so the air intake portion we're going to mount the regulator right here probably. And get these components.
All right, so the reducer is probably going to go right here in some kind of fashion. I'll fabricate a bracket to mount it right here. But this is the best way for it to go in there. It doesn't interfere with anything, it isn't in the way. And then the ECU, I don't know yet. I'll try to find somewhere good, but right here maybe, uh, maybe right here. And then the mixer is going to go right here in the air intake. I'll just drill a little slit in it, mount it right there. So uh, the next portion is mounting everything up. I'll see you in the next spot. Okay, in using the bracket included with your MyCNG Guy kit, this is a standard bracket. I bent the bracket here at 90 degrees. I'm going to run the bolt through the top there and uh, secured it using the included fastener and washer. Uh, I secured it with uh, an impact, not just wrench, so it's on there really, really tight. Let me go out there to the garage right now and show you how I'm going to put this on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount it just like that. So, sit right there. So those relay boxes I had to remove and just set out of the way. It's not going to affect anything. So, it's just going to mount right there and that's it. Alright, so this is the completed regulator ready to install. Uh, you can see that I pre-installed the coolant hoses. They've been pre-measured and gauge is pre-installed and uh, it, the regulator is pre-calibrated. We got two on the top and seven turns out on that and it's ready to go. It's easier to do it like this in a vise than it is trying to install all these hoses in a tight engine compartment. So this is ready to go. You see the brackets done tight. So I'll pull it out. Grab the bolt. Come over here and install it right now. See if I can do this one handed. Alright, so I'll tighten that up and then well, that'll be done, but that's it. That's what she looks like. So, really nice and easy. Alright, so this uh, next part here, the regulator's mounted nice and secure, tight. And uh, so the next part is going to be mounting this mixer in here in line with the, in the air intake. So. I've already pre-determined pre, uh, where it's going to go. It's going to go in this little crack. Uh, that purple spot's where I'm going to drill the hole in it. And remember the mixer, this is going to be facing towards the air box. This will be towards the turbo. This is directional. So that's how it's going to go. And uh, that's how I'll put it in. All right, bye. All right, so I'm going to show you how to get this uh, mixer into the air intake. Uh, you see that I clean the air intake and drilled the hole out. So I'm going to show you how to install this mixer. So, I'll put this down here. So you're going to unscrew this. Stick this in there. Now, undersize this hole so that it's really, really tight.
and then you're going to feed the mixer in. And you're going to screw it in. But before you do that, you're going to put some kind of very strong glue, like some kind of super glue, automotive grade super glue in there, so that this doesn't back off. And that's it. Make sure you get it the right way, though. Uh, this spot here is going to go towards the air filter, and this is going to go towards the turbo. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to do a quick uh, video of my progress so far. And you can see that I've tapped into the factory coolant lines right here and right there. So there that is. That's how you need to do that. This is to keep the regulator warm. That reducer needs to stay warm. So I routed the hose up and around. Goes into the regulator. And you can see there's the mixer right there. I ran into a little bit of a problem. Uh, so the direction of the, the mixer needed to be in there and put the hose over here. Uh, that's as tight as I can get it. So I did mark the relationship that that needs to be at to be the correct angle inside of the air intake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to redirect the air tube back over. But uh, So far that's what I've got going on. Hey guys, this is Troy with MyCNGGuy.com. Today we're going to show you how we install this uh, this fill nozzle into the into a vehicle. A lot of people have been wanting to do a flush mount. Um, you know, they don't want to install under the hood. Just want to pull up next to their normal uh, fuel door and have their CNG fuel door right there. Hey, great, no problem. We've been listening to you. We've got this. Uh, product here. It's a flush. It's a flush mount receiver um, housing for your fill nozzle. So pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, bolts in, and then it has this sleeve. Once we draw our hole, and I'm going to demonstrate how to install it. And then you just put the sleeve together. It compresses or it clamps the um, the uh, metal that's left over. And then you just put your self-tapping your screws right into here. There are six of them, and that pulls it tight, so it's not going to go anywhere. When you choose your location for installing this, uh, make sure you're pitting on part of the vehicle that is rigid and doesn't have a lot of give. And um, that's uh, very important because you want everything to stay tight. Right here is the actual door for or the cap. It's got two little teeth and it just catches that. There's a spring right there that pits it all together and you just take it, rotate it, and it grabs, the teeth will grab the product and you're right there. You've got a nice flush mount. You can just push in, rotate the other way, pull it out, and then go ahead and fill. So I'm going to drill the hole and just show you some of the process. The bit that we're using for this right here is a two and three quarter bit or seven, 70 millimeter. So we'll just go ahead and drill here. If you're super concerned about drilling, what we can do is you can take some duct tape or a heavy, uh, heavy tape, painter's tape, duct tape, and just put your drill on the slowest setting and slowly go into this. You could already pre-drill your pilot hole. That's where a lot of people will go wrong. They'll, they, once this pilot hole goes in, then they, uh, they just, it just uh, draws it in and then sometimes they'll bounce. Um, so pre-drill drill your pilot, a smaller pilot hole, and just put your drill on a slow setting and you won't have any, any heartburn. We've done this before, so we feel pretty confident just drilling it. All right, so the hole's drilled, put this out of the way. Now, what I've done is I've already uh, determined the length of tubing I need. And again, we sell this tubing. This is our six millimeter tubing. We have it in steel and in stainless steel. And um, the black, we uh, typically just carry black. We just like that because it kind of hides itself. And when you're doing your conversion, it looks more professional. But we do have white available. Some of you guys are diehards and want the color that was originally originally came out. And so I've already pre-compressed uh, this on here. I checked my compression fitting to make sure it formed and it's uh, compressed well, and I've determined enough length that I need to make it to our tank, which is right on the other side of this wall. So obviously I'm gonna need a pilot to drill another hole to stick the tube through, and we've determined that as center, and I'm gonna drill that thing out. Okay. 
And as always, we'll put a little grommet in on that side. So what I'm going to do is, as I told you before, these two pieces will slide here and then they will compress down on each other. So I'll take this, we'll go ahead and get here. Hey Aaron, yeah. we can use you buddy. So our lovely assistant Aaron, <laughs> just take this and hold it up right in there. So Wave Aaron. Hold inside. Inside. Yeah, no I mean in here. Yes, we have done this before. That's why the creeper is already preset That's up. That's why the creeper, and not, not Troy being the creeper. All right, so we're going to line it through here, and then we have it. And what we'll do, or Aaron will do, is we're going to take it, and then we're going to uh, line these screw holes, compress it down, and then tighten it together. We're also going to use, that's good, Aaron, thank you. Um, we're also going to use some of this. We use this uh, great stuff or caulk, um, and what we'll do is we'll treat this area right here, this open metal, because we don't want this, to, you know, weather to create a rust ring and then, you know, your rust start to fight your vehicle. So we'll put some caulk right through here once we've made sure this fits perfectly first, and then once we clamp it down, this will be a sealed. Uh, area and this metal will not be exposed to the weather. So guys, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to uh, contact us on our tech support line. You can just drop us an email or give us a call and you're going to love this product. It's awesome. We've got a whole bunch of uh, propane products coming on board. Uh, we've got a lot of requests for that so we decided to incorporate um, my LPG guy into my CNG guy and so we're probably adding an additional 200 plus products uh, to serve you guys better. So thank you so much for the support and, and keep sending us your ideas and um, we're here to support you. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, put that in real quick. We slide that in. Yeah, I still I'm need to groove it and notch it. I'm going to show up what it looks like. So this is kind of a rough idea. We still have to attach it, but you can see what it looks like. When we put the cap on, this is what we really were trying to do. Look at that. I mean, that's nice and clean, looks factory. And, and your stickers will go here to state you know, that it's a CNG and the PSI and what it is. So that's it. And this right here, that beat up bed, the truck is actually beautiful, but the bed is beat up. So that aluminum brand new flatbed is going to be installed on this truck. Stay tuned to our videos. This is going to be our next fuel injected demo truck. So if you're in... Uh, Salt Lake or in Utah and you want to see our new fuel injected diesel system this is going to be our new demo truck so I'll see you guys later. Hi guys this is Sean from My CNG Guy. Now the biggest thing that I hear that people complain about or have trouble with is finding some of these signal wires on the uh, this kit. Now you're going to need to find a tachometer signal and a throttle position sensor signal on every kit that we offer. And whether it's our new fuel injected kit or if it's this uh, My CNG Guy Clean Diesel kit. So I'm going to show you on this Ford um, where to find this wire. And it's really, really easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my laptop and I'm going to open up the Millennium program. All right, the ECU load's going to start up here in a second. See, there she goes. All right, now you see this RPM right there? Okay, so what you're going to do is before you really mount the ECU in a spot in your truck or in the engine compartment is you're going to verify this first. You need to verify the engine RPM first before you do anything else. Okay, so I'm going to put the key in. Let her warm up. And start it up. There's the RPM. Okay, so where I found this at was it doesn't just do this. You have to set this up. So what you're going to go to do is exit that. Go in here to vehicle configuration, and you're going to choose one of these two options. In this combination, we'll come up with the RPM. 
Uh, standard is for 12 volt. Weak is for anything less than 12 volt. The wire that you attach to, if it's 12 volts, you're going to go to standard. If it's weak, anything less than 12 volt. Okay, and you're going to choose what cylinder, what series of cylinder it is until you come up with the correct RPM. Now, when I did this truck, it was at four cylinders. So let's exit out. And you can see the RPM was at 1300. So what I had to do was come in here and lower the or you know lower the multiplier until I came up with the right one and the right one was eight cylinder which is awesome because this is an eight cylinder diesel. So there's the RPM and I'll rev it up. Okay, there you go. So it works. And that's what needs to happen on this system. This is the first thing you're going to do before you do anything. Okay, so I'll take the key out. Okay, so how did I find that signal? Alright, this is my mess. I have the computer dummy hooked up there, just sitting there. Uh, the stepper motor, all the wires. Now this gauge, this gauge has to be hooked up like this or else the system doesn't work. Uh, this gauge has a diagnostic circuit in it, and if it's not hooked up, the computer won't even turn on. So you have to hook this up, and I hooked up, I found my constant, so that's gonna be my constant anyway. So I hooked this up to both of the power wires, and I shielded them so that the alligator clip doesn't like spark on anything. And then I hooked up the ground, and then the brown wire here is the tachometer wire. Okay, so what I did is all of the Fords have this upfitter switch wiring harness and it's tucked up right here. So there's your brake pedal, there's your hood re release, there's your e-brake. Uh, all of them have it right here. Now uh, most of the time they're going to be labeled CTO. This wire will be labeled CTO for clean tack output. Now sometimes that clean tack output works, sometimes it does not. Uh, there have been a couple reasons that I've heard why it may not work on a Ford, whether it's a gas or a diesel. Uh, there are some weird reasons. But as far as the diesel goes, if it doesn't work um, on some of my uh, Ford service center uh, manuals, it's told me that the fuel injection control module may not be receiving enough power, so it won't be able to send out a proper uh, tachometer signal to this, this wire. So that may be one, th one problem. Uh, another problem is I've heard that if the truck was not, does not have the upfitter option installed in the truck from the factory, it may not have the power going to it or this may not be hooked up to wherever it gets hooked up. Those are the two reasons why I've heard that it won't work. But luckily for me, the first wire I touched, I got those ones ready. But the first wire I touched, which was the green with the white stripe, which this was the wire in my 2010 V10. And this one's a 2002 diesel. And they were the exact same wire. And it worked. So... Uh, if not, I do have some options in our My CNG Guy website. To, uh, I have links for different modules that you can buy that you can attach to your alternator, your crankshaft, to your fuel injector, and that'll make it really easy for you to find an RPM signal. So there's other ways to do it, but I'm trying to help you guys out. This is something that confuses a lot of people, and so that's that. The next wire that you're going to hook up to, while I'm here in this big huge mess is here, the next wire you're going to hook up to is going to be, oh, there she is. So this is your accelerator pedal, right? There is a wire up there, right there. See, this is your throttle position sensor on a diesel, and everybody has it right here. And if not, the only other place it would be is outside of your engine, in your engine compartment. But 
all the diesel trucks that I've worked on or seen, they're all right here. Same thing with like your Chevrolet Vortec gas engines, they're right here. And uh, this that, that wiring harness, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into, split that harness open, and I'm going to find out which wire ranges from 0 volt and higher, from a low voltage up to 5 volts when I hit the, the throttle. So I'm going to turn the key on, engine off, and with my voltmeter attached, I'm going to slowly press on the accelerator pedal, and I'm going to watch my voltmeter. And when the voltage increases, and then, and then if I let off the gas, it decreases, that's the wire I know I'm going to have to hook up. So uh, in the system, with it dummy hooked up here, I'll go in here to vehicle configurations, and you'll see the TPS type right there. You see that? Linear 0 to 5 volts. So every truck, every single vehicle has got one of these type of settings. Linear 0 to 5, linear 5 to 0. Some trucks only have a 5, like maybe 4.25 or 3.2 volt. And then when you hit the gas, it'll drop down to a lower voltage, like let's say 1 volt when it's fully floored. So then you would select this linear 5 to 0. A direct switch is either uh, on or off. An inverted switch would be a high going to a low. So, or uh, no TPS. I really don't recommend that. If you can't find a TPS signal, then I guess you can do that. But the way this system works, uh, it has to have a TPS. Okay, so that's how you're going to set that up. And uh, the O2 sensor that we provide with the kit, uh, that's a 0 to 1 volt. So there are other kinds that you can put in, but uh, we're supplying a 0 to 1 volt. So that is the wiring. So the next step for me to do is to find out, now that I know where the wires are and how they're going to be routed, now I need to clean this up and solder in the wires, mount the ECU somewhere, and plan where how I'm going to do this. So as an update, this is the fuel hose. I have to uh, route that. There's an alarm thing in the way. And uh, the this is mounted and dried. So um, I'll let you guys see the next step of my progress. Hi guys. All right, so I'm going to show you the um, throttle position sensor. This is how you check it. So you can see the voltage is 0 0.531 volts. This is with the key on, engine off. Okay. There's the key off. There's the key on. Okay. Let that stop beeping. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on the throttle really slowly. Can you see that increasing? Okay, so that is floored. So it's 3.4 volts. So that's the wire that we want. We gotta let off the throttle. Let's see if I can angle that back over. Okay, so there's the throttle cable. Throttle right there, there I go. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, up here, you can see the wire. I've got it tapped in here, and I'm checking the wires. So this is a wire, and I'm holding my power wire from my meter on the throttle position wire and then the other side goes to ground up there so that's what you do that's how you do it that's how you do your throttle position all right so that's it all right guys i'm going to give you an update of what i've done so far on this truck uh, remember this is a 2002 ford power stroke and uh, so i'm all wrapped up in here there's the gauge and here is the data line. It's right next to the factory OBD2 port. I put mine right there next to it. The ECU is right there. The cable for the gauge is actually all just bundled up right there. So I have everything tucked up nice and neat. Doesn't interfere with anything. Um, everything's nice and clean. So I'm going to get ready to put the cover on so there's no wires dangling down. Everything's nice. 
So there's my two ports. Uh, remember this one is the key on and um, this right here, this uh, ignition switch wire, this cannot lose power when you're turning the key, when you're cycling the key. This needs to keep power on. So remember that. This is going to be off with key off, but when you're cranking it, this needs to have at least 10 volts. And then this one's constant, and this one cannot lose power at all under any conditions. So that one is always constant there. So I'm going to put the cover back on. And I'll show you the switch there. So you can see the light turns on and is in standby, ready to go. So there she is. Yeah, she's mounted there, not going to fall off or nothing. So I'll see you on the next portion. Alright, so this is an update again on this 2002 Ford Power Stroke. And uh, this is a status update. This is what I've done. So you can see the system is fully installed. Have the stepper motor in place, hooked up, fuel gauge, uh, fuel line coming in. It's not rubbing on anything. It's actually, there's, it's clean. There's not mounted rubbing on a frame or anything metal. Uh, coolant hoses, the uh, ground point, and I have it sealed. Uh, it's firmly secured. Uh, the power connections are connected. The blue wire goes into the one side. Ground, you run a wire up into to your ground point. Uh, one side of the gauge is grounded right there. Um, I had to remount his alarm system horn, but somebody just had it sitting in there, so I professionally mounted it. It's not going anywhere. It's nice and tight in there. Um, so yeah, there's the fuel gauge wires right there. I don't, I don't really know what to sh show. This is really easy for me to install, but um, I don't know what else other people would need help with. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Uh, so the fuel line is going to come up and around and into the mixer, and that's where it's entered in. So that's nice and solid. Uh, the Water coolant lines run over. Uh, you can see my oxygen sensor wire here was piggybacked off the off that wire, off that hose. Comes in and down, and I routed it like this to keep it away from the exhaust. This is oxygen sensor wire. If I would have ran it over here, down in that area, then um, it would have probably rubbed on the exhaust and burned it. And then if I would have run it back there, it would have hit the turbo, which is really hot. So I routed it out over here and down. And there's a little channel, you can see daylight there, that's a little channel. I ran the wire down, and there was a couple other wires that came down here too, in the wheel well. See, there's a shock. And um, I just zip-tied it to the other wires. And there's a little hole here in the frame for the wire to go through. And I'm crawl under here. And... There's the O2 sensor. I took it into a muffler shop and had them weld in this bung here. And they thought I was crazy. They said, you know this is a diesel, right? I said, yes it is. But I do crazy things with diesels. So, there's the wire. That's a protective sleeve that I heat shrinked over it so there won't be any corrosion in it. And, uh, so that's that. I get a lot of questions. Where should I mount it? Uh, right here at this bend. Right, right after the bend. That's where you should mount it. So, we provide this oxygen sensor with our kit. This is our magic. This is what makes everything work real well. Alright, so, on the crawl ladder here. Okay, so, there's everything so far. That's what it looks like. Um, yeah, so there's the system. Open the door. See, there's the tank filler. And the truck, everything's nice and neat. There's the data cable right there, right next to the OBD2 connector in the car. So they're both right there. No wires dangling down. That's the alarm here. That's this guy's alarm. That's not me. And uh, that's the brake pedal. You can't see anything that I've done. Everything's all tucked away up, all up in there. And then the gauge again. Actually, the customer just stopped by and he loved it. He took a picture of that to show his friends. 
So, all right, so there was our fill nozzle. He loved that. So there that is. Now the tank, there's the fuel tank. I have to do this. Um, I hired a guy to come in and install the date gas tank and he didn't hook those up and I left the valve upside down. I gotta finish that so when I finish that the next time you see me I will be programming it and showing you how to program her. So that's it so far. Alright, uh, this is uh, gonna be one of the final installments from my CNG guy on your diesel tuning. Um, this video is going to be pretty long. I'm going to show you uh, everything to how to set your truck up perfectly. Now, please note that if you're watching this video and you referred to anybody, referred by anybody but my CNG guy, then uh, you purchased an illegitimate kit or they are trying to copy as design originally created by Sean at my CNG guy. So, um, this was originally created for the use for. Troy and Sean at my CNG guy. Uh, everything that you're going to watch was developed and created and tested by me. So I'm the one that created it. So I'm going to show you everything that I know how to do this. And uh, it's really cool. So let's get started. As you can see on this mode, the first portion I'm going to teach you is going to be called um, I have automatic and dynamic. The automatic mode is the mode that I originally created and I have perfected. Now this mode will not work for all vehicles and so I've created a dynamic mode. But under perfect conditions um, the automatic mode is the safest and um, pretty easy to set up. So as you can see right now um, the way that it's set up the diesel is running. Uh, the RPM is running correctly. It's a 600 RPM. The throttle position sensor uh, is ranging, and I'll see if I can block that out so you can see that. Now, as you can see right now, that little line right here, you see how that stepper motor goes up and down? This is the actual position of the stepper motor. The light blue here that you see, this is the range that you will allow it to run in idle. And in my instructions, I'll tell you how to set this up. But right now, the blue, this is where I'm allowing it. So every time that the, the truck revs up and if the oxygen sensor detects that it needs to add more fuel, um, the red mark is your power. So it'll allow your stepper motor to come out of idle only when you're hitting your gas. It'll allow it to rise above your idle mode and rise to your power mode. Now this power mode is going to have to be adjusted um, and fine-tuned. If you don't have a fuel mileage monitor in your truck then this is going to take some time. But this is how high you're going to allow it to operate. And the highest that you should allow it is you shouldn't reach more than a 50-50 blend which your total fuel mileage should not go higher than double on your fuel computer on just the diesel consumption. So as you can see right now the stepper motor, the computer is not allowing it to the stepper motor to rise above the default and I found where the best place of this truck idles and this is where it idles is at position 40 and the default is at 40 so when we hit the highway in automatic mode the only time that it will come out of um, idle mode and come into full power mode is basically under load when you're towing a trailer or you're you're on the highway and you're cruising down the highway. That is pretty much the only time that this will come out in the automatic mode. Um, this mode does have a safety where if the temperature gets too hot, this mode will allow it to back down and close off. Um, this primarily happens when the vehicle is either overfueling with uh, diesel fuel and you'll know that by you'll, you're smoking really bad, your injectors are in bad shape, you're smoking a lot, you're, and then um, if your temperatures get too hot, it'll, it'll come up into the red and it'll start turning the stepper motor down. So um, right now, uh, I have it set up in automatic mode. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to go into Vehicle Configurations. 
Now, depending on the vehicle that you have, this is going to be completely different for every truck. There's a lot of options in this drop down menu that you can choose, and you're going to choose whatever combination works in these two menus, standard and weak, to come up with the correct RPM signal. Remember, standard is 12 volt, weak is anything less than 12 volt signal. So just choose the correct output um, combination to come up with the correct RPM. Alright, so the next one you can choose is alternate fuel start. Um, this is when the natural gas system will turn on. Um, alternate fuel start is basically where I run them. Uh, you can do any kind of uh, mode that you want, if, let, let's say acceleration. The CNG system won't come on until it reaches 1100 RPM. And I'll show that to you. So we'll switch the switch off. You can hear the RPM drop down. Okay, so that yellow light right there, she's in standby waiting for the RPM to kick on. So let's, um, there we go. So I'll raise it up. And you can see that it switched on. Now this truck, the RPM turns off whenever I let the gas off. You can see that it'll switch off, but it comes right back on when it hits the RPM that it's supposed to. So, I mean, it's a good safety feature. Uh, every time the, it starts deceling, the CNG system turns completely off. So you, that's pretty good. Not every vehicle will do that, but this particular truck does. So I just run it in alternate fuel start, and it, it just runs all the time. Primer duration, you don't need to worry about that. That doesn't do anything. Uh, the type of fuel level indicator, you will need to do this. Uh, the kit that we send you is uh, non-standard, and you will, you will enter in. Uh, value for empty tank, you're going to start at 71. Low fuel will be 74. One quarter will be 84. Two quarter will be 94. Three quarter will be 104. And full tank will be 112. Uh, we have a full tank right now, so our value is 112 and uh, we're topped off at 3000 psi so that's what it is and it displays correctly and as it goes down once it hits these numbers that's when the numbers will start turning off remember start at value for empty tank and go this way otherwise it'll give you an error and hit enter after each time that you you enter those numbers in you have to push enter or it won't res uh, correspond with the computer now your TPS type, this is going to be, I can't give you a, tell you what this is, this is whatever your vehicle is, so just choose the correct type. Now this is what is important, I have two modes, I have automatic and dynamic. When you're using automatic, you're going to go 0 to 1 volt. Now my dynamic mode is 0 to 5 volt type B. So you're going to do everything the same way, but if you want to have dynamic mode on, that's what you choose. I'll go over that later. Now, this automatic mode does not work for every vehicle, and the way that you know that it doesn't work is when you hit the highway, and if it doesn't come up into, uh, if it doesn't come out of idle mode, then you know it's not going to work for you. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is because some diesels, their voltage is not high enough, so it doesn't think that you're leaving idle. It thinks you're always idling. So if that happens, then just go to dynamic. Uh, O2 reading delay, don't worry about that. O2 simulation, don't worry about it. O2 wires, don't worry about that. We don't do that. Optional configurations. So the first screen you're going to have is petrol art fuel switchover. Leave that at 15. Over rev, don't use that one. Automatic switchover to low petrol, don't use that. Uh, this is where you have to set this up for your own vehicle. Optional default lock. This is mandatory. Everybody will be entering something in here. This is where you figure out where your vehicle idles. So just uh, enter in a number. Let's say 100. Okay, so you hit enter in 100. Now remember, hit enter. Now that won't register yet with the computer. So you have to, to make it change, you have to enter that in, hit enter, then turn the switch off then turn it on and now your setting, setting will be entered and you'll see that do you remember before how I said it was 40 now the position is at 100 and you can see the numbers changed the stepper motor activated defaults at 100 and its position is at 100 
So you're going to find that out if you if you have to go over 100 at an idle before it starts chugging, then you need to start adjusting the screws. Remember, I send them set out at the idle mode at two screws and the boost valve at six. So if it's not if you're not getting in enough gas at idle, you can turn that um, idle screw out more, and that will make this run worse. So you want to have it at kind of a lower number. So we'll come back in here and I'll put it back to 40. Now idle opening steps over default. Every single person will only put that at 5. Don't ever put that any higher or else your idle mode will be messed up. Idle closing steps under default. That's your built-in safety. If it reaches, if the temperature gets too hot, it will actually close the stepper motor off under your default. So everybody put that at 50 or 75. Every single person is going to put that at 75. Now this out of idle opening steps over default, that is your boost. That's your power. And that's going to be adjusted by you. I can't give you a definite number. This is what you have to figure out What, how much fuel you want your truck to have. So this is going to be the top number, that the maximum that the stepper motor opens up to. Out of idle step closing steps under default, this one is going to be, everybody's going to put these two the same, and uh, that's going to be 75. Full throttle option, don't use that. TPS, this is a signal filter. If you have problems with uh, a noisy, jumpy throttle position voltage, then you're going to put a filter in there, and you, you can adjust that. Cutoff, don't worry about cutoff. Then go into diagnosis, make sure these are unchecked. This computer was originally designed for gasoline systems and I have created my own system and modified it and made it work for diesel and it does work perfect. So there's my information just uh, screen. We're gonna go get on the freeway right now and I'll show you how this works. So right now we're at idle. Alright, so you can see how that's working. Remember that uh, that thing that moved up and down that is the stepper motor position. Oh, let's go get on the highway. So remember, this mode is for automatic. This is a really, really busy city, so... Give me a minute. It's going to be a long video. Just like all the rest of my long videos. Now one cool thing that you can tell that you're idling really well on CNG is you get out and you can smell the CNG mixing with the diesel. Uh, it's a really cool, unique smell. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to get on the highway now. There we go. Alright, just so you get an idea, we're going to get on that right on-ramp. Okay, so there's the mode. I didn't have a driver help me, so i got to do this all by myself. Okay, so you see that oxygen sensor is starting to turn a little bit lean. Once she hits into the green, it's going to detect lean. Okay, so there she goes. So we're cruising on the highway. And she's hitting full boost. Okay, so that's automatic mode. So let's say all of a sudden you got a slam on your brakes and you let off your gas. Check that out. Stepper motor closes, goes to the idle position, and stays there until the operating conditions are right. Okay, so you see the green up there? She's gonna start boosting, there it goes. This is automatic mode. So you can see how it's starting to hit that top end. This is for people who really want to have a safe system and don't really want to worry about getting too much natural gas and um, this is still completely adjustable so I'm going to drive you to the next off ramp so we're on the highway still cruising so every time you let off the gas it'll go back down to default automatically so you'll never chug or 
have a rough idle. Um, it should always run good. So that's the system. I'm sorry about the glare. There's I've tried everything with the glare. Can't really see the RPM, but yeah, we're at 2,000 RPM. Okay, so that's that's basically what happens. Now, let's say you're towing and it shows that it's lean, and you go up a hill. Once the temperature gets hot, it will start turning itself down. Um, it will detect that it's running too hot. So that's what I like about this mode. Now, this mode you won't get as much CNG as you will with my dynamic mode, but this is a safe. Uh, reliable mode. This is for safety. So, we'll get off on the next off ramp here in a little bit. And I'll show you what happens when we come off an off ramp. So, as you can see, this is why I tell everybody that you have to have TPS, have to have RPM. And you have to have the oxygen sensor where I tell you to. That way it'll run like this. That way when you're on the highway you get the CNG that you want. This is what you bought my kit for. Alright, so here we go. We're coming off an off ramp. So I'm going to let off the gas. So you can see CNG's shut off. Um, most people, the RPM will... Uh, stay active but on this Ford the way that the RPM wire was hooked up is kind of geeky. So I'm, I, I'm coming off the off ramp. No uh, CNG at all so there's no risk of this customer having any kind of overfueling condition. Um, you know, he'll be nice and safe. That's what I want. Bear with me because I'm trying to drive and do this with one hand. Hold the laptop so it doesn't fall off. Okay. Ah, dang light. Okay, so that's automatic mode. That's how automatic mode works. Now, driving around, you're never going to get this to lean out. And you're basically going to be running around like this. This is why you don't get as much CNG on automatic mode. So, if you want more, um, I'm going to stop this video and go to the next section and I'm going to show you dynamic. Okay, so this is the second part of my video. I'm going to show you dynamic mode. This is for people who want most CNG that they can possibly get. There are no safeties on this. Um, this is basically to give you as much CNG as you can. The only difference between the two is going to be you're going to choose 0 to 5 volt oxygen sensor type B. That's important. It needs to be 0 to 5 volt type B. So let me exit out of here and show you. Remember when you choose that mode you need to have the fuel indicator switch off or if it's on just switch it off and then back on. Okay so everything is going to be the same. I'm leaving everything the same. Okay there's CNG. I turned it on. You can hear the RPM increase in the truck. But you notice that the voltage on the O2 sensor is zero volts. So remember, there's no safeties on this mode. So you have to have a pyrometer or know that you're not getting too much CNG so that you don't cause any kind of engine damage. But remember, it is still adjustable. Your max fuel dosage is still adjustable. So what makes this one special? All right, so I'm stopped and you can see the RPM. As soon as you touch the gas, just a little bit, did you see the the my throttle position, it actually starts opening the valve. Okay, so I'll let off. There it goes. It takes you right back down. This is dynamic mode. This is not controlled by temperature. This is just fully automatic. So let's say we're driving, boom. The stepper motor slowly starts increasing and gives you whatever amount of fuel that you want. So but the good thing is, every time you let off the gas, it will always return back down to your default idle mode. So this has a top end and an, an adjustable end, uh, or an idle mode. So the good thing about this system is it slowly increases the amount of natural gas that you get in your vehicle. It's not just poof. It'll just slowly open the stepper motor. So we're going to 
get back on the highway again and I'll show you. So remember, this is my TPS. That's how hard I'm hitting the gas. And I'm sorry about all the bright light. It's really bright. Now here, I have to drive like a race car driver. Okay. All right, so we're in idle right now. Just stopped here. So remember, this system will work on a uh, Sprinter van too. If you got a diesel Sprinter van, this will work on that too. All right, so I'm gonna try to hold this as steady as I can. If it shakes and stuff, I'm sorry. I'm just just me. I did. I had to do this whole install. I did everything but the tank. I still had to redo some things on the tank. So. It's taking me a little bit. So if you're wondering how long it'll take you, if you're all by yourself, it will take you five days to do this conversion all by yourself. Um, unless you're super fast. All right, so we're driving. And you can see my mode is slowly increasing the amount of gas. Okay, so we're gonna get on the highway. I'm gonna let off the gas. You can see it drops right back down. No chugging, no rough idle, no problems at all. Alright, so here we go. Getting on the highway. Alright, so you can see we're at our maximum amount of fuel. We're getting on the highway. Um, so we... This will give you more power, more fuel economy. Um, it's just... There's no real safeties. Um, you see that there is some voltage starting to appear, so obviously the exhaust is getting hotter, but it won't get, it won't shut it off. If it does hit too high voltage, it will shut off. Um, I don't know, maybe if you put the O2 sensor, if you're gonna run a dynamic mode, maybe if you put the O2 sensor really close to the turbo maybe it would do something I haven't experimented with that um, I've just had to develop this due to customer response um, most of the time my kit works really well but there are some people that just want natural gas the whole time they want tons of natural gas so I had to come up with a new mode I had to come up with a new design so I'm giving you guys an option to do either option that you want um, either mode works perfect works really well so you can tell we're cruising down the highway. I would recommend though for everybody to install a pyrometer. Have a pyrometer gauge professionally installed in your truck. Um, no matter what kind of CNG kit you have. Even if you have our nice premium diesel kit, uh, we have a new fuel injected diesel kit that's fully automatic. And you set the power level to whatever you want. It's really cool. And it, that one has built-in safety device, no matter what. You set whatever temperature you want, and it'll shut the CNG right off once it hits that temperature. But uh, if you do put a pyrometer gauge in there, then you're already ready to go. If you want it to upgrade later on, it's really easy to install. So, all right, so I'm getting close to a truck. I had to let off the gas. But you can see it turns right off and comes right back up. So... Um, there you go. So you can see that. So this system, I really like this system. It's really versatile, very reliable. Um, the longevity on this, on a gasoline vehicle, um, I've got 100,000 miles on this system on my 454 truck. Um, tried and true. So it's very reliable, very good heavy duty regulator, very consistent. So I really love my system that I created. Um, for people who want better, want more, want the best, um, then we do have a premium kit out there. Get on our website, mycngguy.com, and you know, tell us how you like it. So there you go. I hope this helps you guys. I've had a lot of customers call me and wonder what I'm doing. Um, this is to help you guys out. So there you go.